All right, welcome back to the Razor Crest series, and now we're going to be starting our landing shot. In this video, we're going to be going over referencing and why you might want to consider using referencing over importing. If that sounds interesting, let's get started. Now, from this point forward, you probably want to follow along because this is going to become an assignment that you will turn in eventually. We're going to be creating a landing sequence for the Razor Crest, and this is going to go over some very specific things for creating a VFX shot completely in Maya and then compositing it in After Effects. We're not going to deal with any live action plates for this specific assignment, just to focus on the Maya aspect of this visual effects class. Okay, so what we need to do to begin with is set our project. So I have the project set here. Remember, if you don't have a splash screen, you just go to File, Set Project. Hopefully this is not new information at all. And you've always been setting your project, but I, I do get a lot of students that don't. So it's vital for this class that you do. Otherwise, all of our output and all of our references and everything are not going to work. So make sure you've set that. And next, we need to load in the previous save that we had. If you have version one and you didn't make any changes to the Razor Crest, it's fine just to use version one. If you didn't have a version two, though, and all your clouds and everything that we did in the previous lecture were also in version one, I'm going to show you what to do on that. And if you made any changes to the Razor Crest and the materials or anything, you would probably want the latest version. So I'm going to show you what to do with version two. So we're loading up version two, but the only thing that we need in this is the Razor Crest itself. And we're going to use this as what is called a reference. So just like we used an Alembic file, an APC file, to import this originally into Maya, for our visual effects shot that we want to create in Maya, we don't want to actually import the model. We only want to reference it. So I'll explain what that is in a moment. But in order to show you that, we need to clean up this scene and set the Razor Crest on its origin just so it's a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so I'm going to go to a different view here. Go to my perspective view. And then we're going to start cleaning this up. So the very first thing is we don't need any of these clouds. So in the outliner, we can select all of those V-Ray volume grids and simply delete them. For the Razor Crest here, we want to reset the rotation. If you did any transforms, you'd also want to reset those. Basically, everything needs to be zero except for the scale, which should be one for each channel. You can also do that from the channel box here, but I prefer the attribute editor. Now for the Razor Crest, now the Razor Crest is grouped, so we could leave a group, but I'm not going to use a group for this, so I'm going to do edit, ungroup. But we will need some kind of hierarchy for this, so instead of using a group, we're going to use a locator. So we can do create locator. And we can scale this up just so we can see it. The locator basically is going to be our transform node or our transform controller for this. We need to figure out where we want it in relation to the, the hull of the ship. So usually what we do is for objects that are really large or like a plane that's very large, we want to have the center point a little bit lower down. So when you animate it, it looks like it's a little bit heavier. It, it just looks a little bit more sluggish. If you want it to be super fast and nimble, you can pull it up to wherever the wing is or the engines are like this. Now I know that the Razor Crest is supposed to be pretty nimble, but it's also, you know, it looks pretty bulky. So it's really up to you where do you put this. I'm actually going to put mine a little bit lower like this, just so it looks a little bit weightier when it's moving around. Once you have set that, we can take all of our objects and then middle mouse click and drag them into the locator one. And when you do that, you can see there's a little plus sign, open up that hierarchy and you can see all of the Razor Crest objects are in there. For locator one, we're going to double click on this and then call it Razor Crest Transform. This is what we'll be using to animate the Razor Crest. So everything will just fall into place there. The reason that I'm not using a group is when we reference it, Groups can cause some issues depending on how you do it. So it just is a little bit simpler not to bother with groups on this. Okay, some other things that we don't need. We don't need any of these render layers that we set up previously, so we can delete those. And then in render settings, we can go to overrides, environment, and then we can delete the sun. Now you could have deleted the sun from over here as well, but we also need to delete the sky because you can see the sky is being used for the background GI reflection. So we want to delete the sky. And when you do that, all of those channels get removed and then there's nothing to override anymore. Okay, so now we are good to go. All right, so now I need to save this. 
but we're going to do save as and instead of doing a scene we're going to do an asset and you, you could put this in scenes but we want to treat this more as an asset than an actual scene in this case so we're going to do razor crest textured version one and then click save all right so basically what we're going to do is use what is called a reference so before we we did file import to import this alembic file into the scene so an import actually takes that geometry and then it loads it into the scene but then it becomes part of the scene and every time you save your maya file it's saving the geometry inside the maya file so if you take a look at video editors for example or anything that you ever do with programming if any of you have have dealt with programming before you usually don't save files all in the same thing you actually have separate files and you reference them so much like after effects or premiere or resolve but for example with after effects you have an aep file but that project file is actually pretty small so instead of saving in all of those video files we simply tell after effects where it needs to load those in and it's just going to save that location and every time we open up after effects it loads in what is needed for the project if you were to save everything inside the after effects file well your after effects files would be you know tens of gigabytes or in some cases hundreds of gigabytes if it's trying to save in entire video sequences that are like really really large so it's much more efficient that way and it makes sense just to keep your files lower because you don't know what you need until you've done your edit and that's all the after effects needs to worry about is what you are doing in that scene so this means though that if you send your aep file or your project file to somebody else or you switch computers usually after effects has no idea where those videos are and if you didn't supply the video files then it won't be able to load them up so that's what we're going to be doing with this scene and in order to drive the point home basically and show you some like real advantages of this basically what we're going to do open up we're going to open up a new instance of maya and i want to show you what the referencing does all right so i have a new version of maya here you also want to make sure this is set and then i'm just going to do new and for this instead of going to file import we're going to do file create reference and then click on the option box this is going to be pretty important for references i click on this and then we're going to scroll down and there's going to be a few options here and i'm actually just going to open up this window it's a lot of information there Let's expand the whole thing by default it's going to rename any node that you import from a referenced file and the same works for importing as well so if you've ever noticed that if you import an object from another maya scene it has this really really long name on every object that you load in it's going to be the same as the file so this is kind of irritating especially if you have a really long file name so for example on this i have razorcrest textured version 1.mb well this entire thing up to the extension is going to be a prefix for every single node that you load in from this file which is kind of irritating for example let me just show you what i mean so if i load in the textured reference here we can see that this is the same thing that we saw here the same object with that locator and everything but every single node has Razorcrest textured version one colon and then the same name that so gives huge names and if you have even longer names this can get pretty unwieldy like you have to open up all your hypershade windows to see everything it's a little bit cumbersome so instead i'm just going to create a new scene again we're going to do file create reference option box and we're going to say use selected namespace as a parent and add a new string for anything in front of it you could also do this one sometimes but this one is going to be problematic with the render layer editor and this seems to be a new thing with maya 2022 but this is not going to be what we can do anymore so anything that had the same name for example def default light set it would do it would put that prefix on only the things that had the same name but in this case it's going to mess everything up so we're going to do this instead and this is going to be really really useful because it's going to be very clear to us what is referenced and what is not so in this case we're going to do reference underscore and that's going to be a prefix on everything that we reference from the other file there are some other options here but these are all default and we don't really need to change anything else and next we're going to do reference so this is not going to be in our scenes folder this is going to be assets razor crest textured version 001 we're going to reference that 
And the first thing you need to do when you load this in is make sure that your render setup, you see these icons, because if there's a problem, you won't see these icons and then you'll have a lot more work to do later to fix this. So once again, that is accessible on this button right here. So render setup, you need to load that in. We're gonna be using that frequently now for everything that we do in Maya. All right, so when I loaded in this reference, you can see that we have a few referencings here that we probably didn't need. We don't need this reference perspective, reference camera, so we can delete those later. And then here on the Razor Crest transform, we have two things. We have that prefix, the reference underscore, and then the name of the transform object, and then all the objects underneath. But then there's also a little blue diamond in the upper left-hand corner of that icon. This indicates that it's referenced as well. Okay, so let me show you one of the biggest advantages of referencing. So for this, I'm going to grab the transform locator. I'm going to make sure the auto key is set on. If you don't like the auto key, that's fine, but I, I can only animate with the auto key. And I'm going to pull this back. I'm going to rotate this round. Click S to set all our keyframeable channels. Then go all the way to the end at 200. I'm going to have it do a spin. It's going to fly forward. And it's going to do something like this. So it's basically doing a spin and then it's going to stop right there. Cool. So one of the most useful things about references is the fact that an animator can start using assets before they're finished. So let's say you're a modeler or a texture artist and you have not finished that model, well, the model doesn't have to be done for the animator or the layout artist or the lighting artist to work on it. So if you are at a much larger studio, you will see people specialize in specific fields like lighting, animation, rigging, all of that stuff. But if you're the modeler, well, modeling takes a long time and, and you're not just gonna model it once and it's gonna be done, there'll be changes. Or the client will decide, hey, we actually wanna change the design. We want three engines instead of two or something. Well, if you had to wait for the modeler and the texture artist to finish, you would never have time to animate anything if you're an animator. And further down the pipeline, you have less and less time to work on it. So instead, you just work on whatever they have available at the time, which in this case, let's say we have this model. This model is you know, pretty much done, but there might be some minor things that have to change. So this is where referencing is very useful. So let's say I'm the layout artist and I just did a quick rough animation for the animator to then make this look a lot nicer. The modeler can keep working on this and then the animator can just update this model when they're done. So let me go back to the previous version here and just show you that example. So in this case, let's say that we wanted three engines for some reason, or the client did. They're like, yeah, we love this new design. We're like, okay, cool. Let me just delete that. And then for this, we'll say, all right, we, we made a version two. So I'll make a version two of this. So in your other Maya scene, instead of having the problem of, well, I've already animated the object and now I have a new object. So what am I going to do? Well, I could still do a file import. I could reset all these channels on like a frame zero, for example, like I could go frame zero and then have a new keyframe where I reset everything to zero and then hopefully all the animation I can copy those keyframes over. It's it's cumbersome, okay? Sometimes it's very, it's pretty easy to do, but it still takes time. Other times it's almost impossible to update that model without having to redo a bunch of stuff. Instead, since this is referenced, all that I have to do is go to file, reference editor, and then instead of version 1, I can right click, reference, replace reference. So now I can load in version two. And now we have a third engine. But all the animation is still the same because that didn't change. That is one of the most useful things about referencing in Maya. The other really useful aspect of referencing is if you have very, very heavy geometry, let, let's say this was 3 million polygons, which for like film it is not, that's not that high, honestly, especially if you have a lot, a lot of deformations or you have a massive scene that that's probably on the low side so let's say you have that and it's you know let's say you have a bunch of really high poly objects that you have you know entire landscapes and everything in your maya scene well every time you save that maya scene if everything was imported 
Well, your myosin could be several gigabytes large, which that might not seem like a lot, but after you have, you know, let's say 10, 20, 30, 100 iterations of that project and you're incrementing and saving or you're saving different versions, you're now using a massive amount of hard drive space. And every time you save it, it can take longer and longer and longer to save. So referencing also keeps your file sizes much smaller because you don't need like 20 different copies of the same Razorcrest model in every Maya file. You only need one or however many versions that they created of that, but you don't need to keep importing that over and over and over again. So it keeps your file sizes low. Another really useful thing about your reference editor, once you have a lot of references in your scene, let's say I, I was done with the Razorcrest and it's really heavy in the viewport and I just don't want to look at it. I don't want to load it. I don't want to waste system resources for something that I don't need to look at. You can simply uncheck it. And you can see in the outliner here, you get a little X and it gets grayed out because that just means that you, you can't do anything with this. It's not, it's not even loaded anymore. Okay. So it's going to keep your scene really, really responsive. So it's not even there anymore. And whenever you need to render or you need to reference it for something, you can just turn it back on. That's really useful, especially if you have a lot of them. So with a reference, you can still do changes. Like you can still do things like, oh, oh, they messed up something here. Let me fix that. Or I, I need to redo the textures or I need to swap out a material or something. You can still make those changes. Although the, the main idea is you, you don't really make the changes there. You do them at the root or whatever you imported. That's the safest way to do it. Because sometimes you can mess things up depending on what they are. Later on, you might have to worry about that if you import a new reference, but for the most part, it's, it's okay. Some things you cannot do with referencing though, like you can't decide that you're going to completely change all of the geometry and expect everything to be fine. Now, since we only animated this locator, technically we could swap out the razor crest for any ship. It wouldn't even matter as long as it has some kind of locator and you could change anything underneath it and everything would be fine. Like any of these objects would be fine. Now the problem would be though, if I started animating things like the gun turrets, and if I merge the gun turrets to the hull in what we're referencing, well, that's going to screw up the animation here and certain things are gonna break. Same thing with rigging, for example. Like let's say you started completely changing how this thing moves, but you've already been animating using another rig. Well, that would be a problem. So you do have to think about how you're using references, but referencing can be very, very useful, especially for you as a student. If you have large scenes, it's very easy just to put all your assets like, like you would in Unreal, for example. You have all your assets and if you want to replace it, all you have to do is you know replace that, that asset with a new one. And then your main file, everything is just you know on the origin and it's very easy to make modeling changes instead of saying, oh, okay, well, my ship's like this, but I wanted to, you know, add a part here. Well, it's very difficult to make, make changes to the UVs or the textures or the model if the object is not, is not zeroed at the origin. This is harder. So that's another advantage for referencing for you guys. Okay. Hope that makes sense. I know this was kind of a long explanation, but I feel like it's an underused thing in, in our program that I think you guys should, should start using. So a couple of things that you might run into though, if you start using references is if you don't set your project or you move wherever that reference is, Maya might not be able to load it. So you'll probably get a little error when you first launch Maya that, Hey, it can't find the reference. So what you can do is simply right click reference, replace reference, and then just go find wherever that is. Okay. Right. So I hope that makes sense for references. Now we're going to do it all over again in a blank scene, just so you remember what to do. So file, create reference. We're going to go to the namespace options, use selected namespace and put in some kind of tag. If you don't want it to say reference, you don't have to do that. You could simply do an underscore, but do something that makes sense. Like I'm going to do reference underscore, then do reference. We actually don't need that version two. I'm going to delete that one. And we're just going to load in version one. Now for these cameras, we need to go back to the scene that we were referencing, which was the one with three engines. I don't actually want to save that one. So I'm just going to load in version one again. No, don't save that. And this is now the same thing. 
I can also delete these two objects here, the perspective and the camera. Save this. Go back to our new scene. File Reference Editor. Right click. And now I can do what's called reload the reference. So it's, it hasn't been upversioned. It's still in the same file, but we're simply going to reload it. And now you can see those two cameras have been removed. The important thing to note here is though, in your render setup, you need to make sure that you can see these icons. And when you create a layer, it is actually going to create a layer. If you can't do that, then you need to make sure that when you reference it, you don't merge the selected namespace, okay? You might also get some errors over here saying that, hey, this is, this is read only because some, some things in references you cannot change. For the most part though, it's, it's okay to change things like the model or make some changes to it, but certain things are locked because it could screw you over, okay? Right, so we wanna make sure that that is referenced because later on we might swap out this model or I might give you a different ship or something that it would be important if it's referenced. If you have any questions on referencing or anything else that we've done so far, please feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.